Ida for telling my daughter it's her fault she has no pictures of herself. Okay, so I, 54F, have 5 kids, 3 bio, 2 step. The issue with is with my eldest Clem who is 26F. The only pictures I have of Clem are from the day she was born to around her 8th birthday but none after that. She would ruin any picture she was in by making funny faces, hiding from the camera, making weird signs with her hands, or by messing with other people. It was like this until she was 12 when she started to straight up refuse. We would tell her to come for the family photo, but she would refuse. We never forced her but would gently encourage her. She even refused school pictures. I have no pictures of birthdays, graduations, prom photos, holidays or days out with her in them. It broke my heart because I don't have any pictures of her growing up. Family photos look odd, because she's not in them. Clem is 26 now and is pregnant with her first child. She brought her so over for dinner and after we were looking at photo albums. We got to hers and she saw hers was nearly empty. She asked where all her pictures were and I told her she refused to have any taken. She got all teary eyed and told me to stop joking. At this point, I'm very annoyed I tell her I'm not joking and that she did this to herself. I told her if she had swallowed her pride and had even one picture, we wouldn't be like this today. She got angry and thought I had printed out the ones she had messed up. She got super upset and went to sit in the car. The next say, today, I got a few texts from family members calling me an asshole for putting her on blast and humiliating her. Ita, edit, thank you for all your replies. I do want to clear something up. Whilst I agree it was a shitty move not to include goofy or rude pictures, that's not what Clem has an issue with. She's upset that I have no pictures of her from age 12 to 18 to fill the album with and the few I do have, caused extreme reactions from Clem. I can't fill an album with pictures I never took. That's what she's upset about not the omission of goofy slash rude photos. Edit 2 to those of you saying who cares about rude gestures, or goofy faces, I didn't realize this needed saying, but the family photos weren't just for me they were for everyone involved, aunts, uncles, cousins, grandparents on all sides, etc. Can guarantee none of them want an 8 years old making the eat out gesture in what is meant to be their nice family photo. Edit 3, it's kind of sad to see so many people assume that because a child has anxiety, that I berate them whenever they mess around when taking a photo. I never yelled at Clem for making silly faces would simply encourage her to stop and smile, but her rude gestures and faces would ramp up. But I guess that's what you expect on this sub everyone hates their their kids. NTA, it is her own fault. WTH did you daughter know the eat out gesture at 8? My parents would have never let me get away with that. We were in a rough area back then and she told me one of her friends down the road was doing it so she copied him. I did explain to her why she shouldn't do it. NTA, I hate having my picture taken and I look awkward in all photos taken of me. But I now at 22 have realized the consequences of my actions and I try really hard to get pictures of myself. I used to have long, long hair to my knees and now it's above my shoulders. I have no photos of my long hair because I would pin it back or shy away from the camera. You were damned if you didn't damned if you didn't in this situation. If you placed a screaming, crying child in front of the camera she would basically never trust you and now you have a crying adult asking why you respected her wishes. If you placed a screaming, crying child in front of the camera she would basically never trust you and now you have a crying adult asking why you respected her wishes. That's what's so confusing to me. I could have easily made her take part in every shoot, no matter how she was feeling, panic attacks be damned, but that's awful. That's going to mess her up psychologically. Now that time has passed and I respected her wishes, I'm the bad guy for not forcing her to take them. Info, how is this just now coming up? Are you saying that there are family photos hanging in your home that do not include your daughter? Is she really just looking at this photo album for the first time at 26 years old? Are you saying that there are family photos hanging in your home that do not include your daughter? Yes. None of the family photos include my daughter, 
unless they were taken before she turned 8. Is she really just looking at this photo album for the first time at 26 years old? Yes and no. We would bring them out at Christmas and stuff, but she would always cringe, say she didn't want care and went to her room. I've told her previously that her album is pretty scarce, but I guess she wasn't aware to the scale. NTA. But why not just give her the old negatives that you did not print so that she can see for herself? That's a good idea. They're on my computer, so it's not like I deleted all the photos of her. The issue was that she made some rude gestures or poses in many of them, which I am obviously not comfortable putting on the wall. She does know that she messed up pictures with her gestures and poses and she obviously can't forget about her aversion to cameras, so I don't know why she was so surprised. Ita for not telling my daughter's mother her secret words. Cast, me, M36. My daughter Clara, F12. My ex-wife Sarah, F37. Few backstory details, Sarah and I got married when Clara was born, and separated when she was 6 years old. Clara spends her time 50-50 between us with 2 week splits. We both live in the same city so her friends and schooling are consistent, not constantly switching back and forth. The event in question. This all started when I read The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien to Clara two years ago. Talked about how he was a linguist and had actually created several languages from scratch for the story. This captured my daughter's imagination. She has been obsessed with linguistics ever since, and I have been happy to provide as many texts and information as I can. Almost all of it is for higher level students, but I do my best to help her understand it. I am definitely not a linguist and she definitely knows more than me at this point. For about a year she has been creating her own language which she calls Nista, I think that's the spelling, it is only verbal, this language isn't just English with different sounds for the different words. It is actually a new language, she has created different conjugations, syntax, and grammar. Just one example is a bunch of different suffixes to indicate emotion that can be attached to any word. Clara and I speak Nista together for probably about 60% of our conversations. It is the highlight of my entire life, I cannot believe how creative my daughter is. Sarah married 5 years ago, and I haven't been in a relationship since we divorced. Clara prefers her time at mine, something I definitely don't encourage. I want her to be happy at both. But she has never been comfortable around her stepdad and stepbrother, I think he is around the same age as her, but I'm not positive. I knew that Clara had never taught Sarah any Nista, which I was selfishly kinda happy about. I loved having this language that only me, my daughter, and her friends shared. However when Sarah dropped Clara off this week, she informed me that she hadn't spoken anything but that gook for the entire two weeks she was with her. Sarah then demanded that I teach her the secret words, I refused and explained that if Sarah wanted her to know any Nista, I stressed its name because Sarah kept disparaging it, she would have taught her it. I then closed the door in her face. Sarah texted me saying there could be an emergency and she would need to know. I said that she still knows English if there is an emergency. I have talked to her teachers at school. Our English teacher said that Clara has shown her the language, but only briefly. In all of her classes, including English, she speaks English. Thinking it over, I don't know if I did the right thing or not. This is a massive part of our daughter's life, and one that she isn't letting her mother into. She has told me that she wants to go to college for linguistics, so this isn't anything temporary. So Reddit, am I the asshole? Nah. Here's the thing. It's not really hard to guess why Clara prefers your house. Kids don't generally like it when their parents move on after a divorce. A lot of times it feels like a betrayal to them. Sarah has done this, and Clara isn't happy with it. She doesn't want another bearist and sibling, she wants her parents. You haven't dated, so in her eyes at least, you are the only parent is completely devoted to her. I know it bothers you that Sarah seems so unsupportive of Clara's language, but to you it's a purely happy thing, an example of your child's brilliance and creativity. For Sarah, it's a constant reminder that Clara prefers you and that she is being excluded from a big part of her child's life. That's not your fault 
but I'm sure you can see why that makes her a bit resentful of the language, especially after two weeks Clara using it intentionally to alienate her. All that being said, I don't think you should teach Sarah the language. To Clara, it will be a massive betrayal, and it won't solve the problem of why she's doing this. Do the best you can to encourage a positive relationship with her mom and step family. Communicate as much as possible with Sarah about how Clara is doing and what's going on in her life, and get Clara into some some counseling if you can to help her deal with her feelings. I think the solution here is to help get Clara to the point where she's not wanting to alienate herself from her mom and step family anymore. If you just take away her means, she will simply find a new way to do it and be that much angrier at all of you. NTA but why she refused to communicate with her mom for an entire two weeks really needs to be addressed. She said that, she wanted to make them feel how she feels around them. NTA as it's your child's creation and she's free to share it with whoever she wants. It is not your obligation to teach your ex. That being said, a conversation with your daughter about when it is appropriate to use the language may be in order. Refusing to talk to her mother in English is not a good thing and at 12 she's old enough to realize what she is doing. Yeah, she definitely knew what she was doing. She told me that she wanted to make them feel how she feels around them. Hadn't spoken anything but that gobbledy gook for the entire two weeks she was with her. That is seriously concerning. I'm getting the impression, like another comment or mentioned, that your daughter has trouble seeing her parents move on from each other. Your ex started dating so she's bearing the brunt of it now. But when you find a nice woman again, she might behave like this with you too. It's not healthy for Clara to feel this way and I'm sure she's hurting a lot. I'm going to say nah. Edit, I think maybe some individual and group therapy could smooth some tensions over. It's very strange that you don't know much about your daughter's stepbrother. Perhaps she's taking cues from you. Ita for yelling at my husband to stop eating my food. I'll keep this pretty cut and dry. I have a lot of food allergies, gluten intolerance, IBS, lactose intolerance, I'm allergic to spinach and kale and other leafy greens in that family. I buy special food for myself as well as regular food for my husband who does not have any allergies or food intolerances. For some reason, my husband likes to eat my snacks as well as his own. Instead of going to get a new loaf of bread, he'll open my gluten-free bread and eat all of it. It's been an issue our whole relationship. He says it's because he wants to use all the food before we go grocery shopping again so nothing goes to waste. Now, I'm 13 weeks pregnant and the amount of things I can eat are even less. Pretty much the only things I can keep down are these very specific gluten-free crackers that are like $8 a box, and banana. Bananas. Yesterday I came home from my doctor's appointment and found out that he ate my whole brand new box of crackers. I had just gone grocery shopping and we had plenty of food and snacks for him to eat. When I asked him why he decided to eat pretty much the only thing I can keep down, he said he just grabbed some crackers, and he didn't see the big deal and that I was overreacting by being upset. He said he knows my pregnancy hormones are out of whack but I needed to control myself. That made me angry and I told him he needed to stop eating my food and making me feel bad for being upset or he wouldn't have a wife anymore. He got really offended and hasn't spoken to me since, and I feel like I overreacted due to my pregnancy hormones, but I also feel like I am kind of valid in being frustrated by my husband who has no allergies eating all my specialty food before I get any. Later, he gets annoyed if I only buy things I can eat. He asks why he has to eat my diet when it's not him that has problems. My pregnancy was an accident. I guess my birth control failed or something else happened. It wasn't planned because we were working through issues and I didn't want to bring a baby into the world during a pandemic. Please stop telling me I was stupid for having a baby with him or to have an abortion. I can't get an abortion even if I wanted to. I'm simply asking for judgment on this situation. Please, I'm begging you, stop messaging me to abort my baby. I have over 100 messages telling me to get an abortion. I understand it's out of concern and you think you're being helpful but I am exhausted. 